second game of the season by a final of 81 to 68. They're now 11 and 1 in the Lone Star Conference. That was three one. It's time for the Coach Lon Reese Radio Show on the exclusive home of the defending Lone Star Conference Tournament Champions, 93-1 KSTV Country. Coming up, a recap of last week's games, a review of upcoming opponents, and so much more. Now, let's send it to the lobby of Brewer Voters and join the voice of the Texans, KC Hogan, who's alongside the 26-year head coach of the Charlton Texans, Lon Reese and good afternoon from the lobby of Bruner Motors on the corner of the South Loop and Lillian Street in Stephenville. Make sure you stop by. Plenty of free food courtesy of Slotsky's, refreshments, and Tarleton Athletic giveaways later in the half hour. The Coach Lon Reesman Radio Show, sponsored by Bruner Motors. So we thank them for their support making the show possible. Coach, good afternoon. Congratulations on another great week of basketball. Thank you, Casey. Let's get the show kicked off by recapping the two games over this past week. The schedule started on Saturday night with an 8-14 Texas A&M Kingsville team. That game was broadcast on CSN Houston. Coach, you would win 94-58. to It didn't look like being on TV phased your guys a bit. Well, you know, I, I really was pleased with that. We didn't mention it a whole lot during the week with so much – Social media now you don't have to tell your kids who you're playing what the records are or anything they they've already know probably know more than than you do and so you know, I just I just like the way that we went out and and, and took control of the game and uh, the, uh, Kingsville played really well early they had a game plan early and uh, I thought at, at first you know they were doing a great job of um, uh, you know stalling the ball out front running their sets and then they you know shot the ball real well early and then, and then I thought we made some adjustments to help. Uh, uh, speed them up a little bit. Our press helped speed them up quite a bit, and we started challenging the wings more. And and uh, I, I thought our kids uh, held their poise and did what they had to do. Speaking of shooting the ball well, you shot 65 percent from the field, the highest for a Tarleton team since December of 2003 against Hillsdale Free Will Baptist. Is, is it safe to say that you're out of that shooting slump? Well. I you know, I just take it game by game. There's no doubt about that. Uh, I mean, it's just you never know. I mean, I, I really felt like we shot the ball well the other night. And, and then, then we shot 50% again on Wednesday night. And if you can stay into that 50% area and, and keep your opponents like you and I talked down around that 40 to 38, then you're going to have a chance to win ball games. You'd win by 36 points against a Lone Star Conference opponent. To be fair, King Kingsville was a little shorthanded. Yeah, Basie didn't play. He's an outstanding player, one of the best players in the league. And uh, yeah, I think he has, has an injured hamstring. And, and so, you know, at, at this time of the year, it, 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 you're gonna you're gonna see injuries, you're gonna see sickness, and you uh, you know all teams have to overcome it. There's no doubt about it. Chuck Guy had a career high 14 assists to go along with 18 points on the year coats. Chuck has 143 assists and only 40 turnovers, a three-point assist, assist turnover ratio that leads the nation. Does that prove that he could be one of the best point guards in the nation? Well, you know, he's played well all year, Casey, and I mean, it's uh, you know, that's that's one of the reasons that we've been so good is uh, you know, our our I don't know what we're averaging on turnovers right now, but it's. You know, we always try to go 12 or below, and, and there's some nights that we've, you know, we've kept it in single digits most of the time. And on the year, Coach, uh, your team turnovers per game, 10.3, plus yeah. five turnover margin. Yep, yep. And Pretty good. If we can keep it there and on, on a consistent basis, you're going to have a chance to win games. With the 94-58 to 58 win over Texas A&M Kingsville, the Tarleton Texans have proved to 21-1 and one on the season and 10-1 and one in the Lone Star Conference, and they would remain home for the final conference home game of the season, and that would be a matchup with 10-13 and 13 West Texas A&M. They come to town, losers of nine of their past 12, but despite that record, we talked a lot about the talent they had, and they proved it. You know, I was talking to another head coach this morning, and he really feels like West Texas might have right at the top of the talent you know, in, in our league when you talk about their top seven. Uh, they are very talented. They got Gibbs out of UMass. They got another young man, the point guard out of North Carolina A&T. They have got some very good Division One transfers and and uh, some outstanding JC players that came in there. They are very talented, and if you uh, you know at all take your mind off what you have to do to beat them, you're going to get beat. And, uh, I, their record is, 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 you know, you just can't look at the record right now, Casey, because they're that much better. Interim head coach Vinay Patel said after the game that your bench really wore his team down. Isn't that what this year's team is built to do? Well, it really is. I mean, our, you know, we have a lot of depth and we're able to run people in and out and they can exhaust themselves on the floor. You can run somebody else in. And what I, what's the you know, most pleasing to me is there's no drop off when whoever goes in and you're always looking for that one different player to to have the big night. I thought John Kathy Macklin had the best game of the year the other night. What a good time to have it. You know, he went out there and just dominated the backboards, 13 boards, and, you know,
know, eight points, and uh, I was happy to see him have the game he needed to have. Those 13 point, 13 rebounds, pardon me, a career high for John Kathy Macklin. How good can this team be if Kathy Macklin can play like that the rest of the way? Well, I mean, it, it, definitely we can improve where we are right now, and if he can improve there. And then, you know, I've seen Mo Lee really come on lately. I think he had five offensive rebounds the other night. He's really attacking the backboards and shooting the ball well and, and doing the, you know, and playing great defenses, which I need him to do. And, and if he'll continue to improve his game, then again, we have another player there that's stepping up even to a higher level than he's been at, and, I, and, and it's anxious to see how he continues to improve these next two or three weeks. Now, the storyline, if you're at the game at Wisdom Gym, um, against the Buffaloes on Wednesday night was their shooting from the arc coach. They hit their first seven. They're nine of 12 in the first half, but was the key that you were only down by two? Well, I guess so, because they couldn't miss a three. I'll tell you that. I mean, they were from downtown, and I'm just kind of watching the net pop every time they shot it. And you wonder when it's going to quit. And, you know, it's you know, you're out there, and you're, you're game planning, and you're trying to do you make, do, you know, what kind of adjustment you make when they're hitting two or three off behind the arc. And, and so, uh, you know, it was a little bit frustrating. And, you know, again, I keep saying that these teams are excited to play against us. These teams are going to play their best ball game against us, and they're going to get their A game most of the time. And they came in enthused and excited and, and uh, shot a couple of down, and all of a sudden they're hitting everything they shoot. And, and uh, we have to overcome that and finally made a couple of different adjustments at halftime. But uh, give their kids credit. They came in here, and they're competitive, and they came to play. And like I said before, they are a talented basketball team. But typically when a team hits nine three-pointers on you in one half, you're not going to be trailing by two points. No, and I think one of the reasons that we, we you know, we I don't know, we shot the first half, Casey. I think that, uh, 48%. You no, know, we're at a 50% the first half, too. Uh, uh, I think another thing is is that we really controlled the offensive boards the first half, and, uh, you know, we were able to uh, control the defensive boards. But they shot so well, you know, I mean, they just, they just really, really played well the first half. Points in the paint, you dominate down low, coach, 42 to 18. And against West Texas A&M, that's critical. You know, West Texas has always been a great rebounding basketball team. I think that's one of the things that Rick Cooper ever, always stressed with the years he was out there is that, you know, they were going to be physical and they were going to bang you on the boards and it was just going to be a war on the boards. And and for us to, to win that war at that level, it, that was a big surprise. I mean, I was, you know, if we can just keep, continue to carry that over, Casey, then we got a chance to, to win some more games. With the 81 to 68 victory over West Texas A&M, Tarleton is now 22 and one on the year and 14 and one at home this season. On Tuesday, Tarleton moved up one spot in the NABC Top 25 poll to the number three ranked team in the nation. When we return in one minute, Coach and I will continue to talk about this season and we'll start to preview the games this weekend for Tarleton. This is the Tarleton Athletic KSTV Radio Network. Hi, this is James Childress from Brooklyn Motors and Ace Outlet in Stevenville. And this is Shane Slavoy, the Cowboys. We're proud supporters of Tarleton Athletics. And we're excited to invite you to the all new Brooklyn Chevrolet. We've completely remodeled the sales and service area to create more space and better service. And every new car at Brooklyn Motors includes a Brunner Advantage. On top of the Brunner Advantage, every 2014 vehicle includes a GM two year, 24,000 mile maintenance program free. Only at Brunner Motors in the South Loop of Stevenville and BrunnerAuto.com. Materials, yeah. oh, Free and yeah, for your favorite favorite needs. Turkey and sliced avocados. Hickory smoked ham. Tender braised beef. Try all three hand car sandwiches. And join us for dinner. Gourmet pizzas, new black bread, fresh tossed salads, and more. Dinner's here at Slotsky's. Number one, KSGB. Right side, three pointer, it is now. Unbelievable. DeAndre Upchurch is taking over this game. And that was the call as DeAndre Upchurch was six of six from the arc in the game against Texas A&M Kingsville. Coach, speaking of Upchurch, he's averaging 17 points per game in conference games. That's tied with Monsego Williams for third in the conference. He's really turned it on. Yeah, you know, I, he, we knew he was a good offensive player, and we can set his speed. He can shoot it as good as anybody, Casey. But I've been really wanting him to continue to, to improve on is his defense, getting through screens, you know, getting hip to hip, following footsteps, getting through there, making, you know, being physical. Go to the backboards. Those are the things that he has to do on, on the defensive end of the floor, too, because we know what he can do on the offensive end. Does it seem like he's a little bit underrated around the conference? Because you hear a lot about Montego Williams, Kenny Williams, Chuck Guy, and Upchurch well, just as good score as the rest of them. I think that when you have uh, the depth that we have, and you, yeah. know, you have, you know, we, we just don't have one player that we have sure. to count on. 
like a lot of teams, you know, they have a leading score. That's the guy that's got to carry them every night. We have we have a team where we're just built with so many players is that I, I you know there's not just one that can get all the accolades all the time because you know you have somebody stepping up different every night and what's been amazing about your team is everybody seems to be fine with that well, a lot of times that's not the case you know another yeah, and, and, and very observant, <laughs> you know that very observant because i had another coach call me today or talk to me today and saying i, and I just don't understand the, why it's like that over there what have you guys done because when you have that many players and there's just time enough for just so many of them and there's just enough balls you know the shoot I, I you know I, it's amazing that you you've had the chemistry and you haven't had any problems and and uh, you know it's, it's 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 amazing that your kids have bought into what you guys are doing and and that's what it's all about it's buying into what we're doing it's not about one person it's not about it's not about an individual it, it, it's about a team and it, you know I keep telling these guys, 10 years from now, 20 years from now, they're not going to remember just the one person. They're going to remember a team from 2014, and that's what you. That's what. That's what. That's what athletics is all about. And if you can find young men that will buy into a team concept, then you have a chance to win games. Let's take a look at the standings around the Lone Star Conference. The Tarleton Texans in first place in the conference with 11 wins and one loss. They have a one-game lead on Midwestern State, who is two and ten in the conference. There's a two-way tie for third place, Angelo State and Eastern. They're five games behind Tarleton, four games behind Midwestern. You've got a two-way tie for fifth place between Commerce and Cameron at five and seven. You've got Texas A&M and Kingsville at seventh with three wins and nine losses. They're eight games behind Tarleton. And then West Texas A&M, two wins and ten losses. Uh, they are in eighth place in the conference. And it's clear right now that this is a two-team race with two to go. Well, yeah, that's what it is right now. There's no doubt. I mean, people are jockeying for position, you know, where they're going to be in the conference tournament. And, and there's people jockeying right now for wins because some of those people are in the top eight in the regional poll right now. And that, that means a lot to them to make the NCAA tournament. Uh, you know, it become, it's coming down to us in Midwestern. Midwestern, as, as usual, has an outstanding team. They're very, very good, and we have a lot of respect for them. And, uh, you know, it's just going to be a tough race for the rest of the way in. Let's talk about that first regional ranking that was released on Wednesday. It's the South Central Regional Ranking. Ten teams each week in the rankings. There will be three rank rankings released. Then the final ranking will be released on Sunday, March 9th. The top eight teams in the region make the NCAA tournament. Right now, number 10, Colorado, Colorado Springs. At number 9, Texas A&M Commerce. Number eight in the region, Texas A&M International. Then at the seventh spot, it's St. Mary's that made the Sweet 16 last year. At number six, Arkansas Fort Smith, Angelo State, number five in the region. You've got Colorado Mines, number four, Midwestern State, number three, Metro, number two, and the number one ranked team in the region right now, the Tarleton Texans. Coach, does this put you in the position you'd hoped you'd be in? Well, yeah. you know, you always want to be number one in the region and have a chance to host this thing in Stephenville, but Casey, there is such a long ways to go. We understand that, and you know, there you know you have to look you know you look down the line we have we have three huge games left metro has probably three huge games left the thing that is the, the the thing that doesn't balance things out is is the conference tournament our conference tournament is going to be on a neutral floor the conference tournament for metro is going to be at metro and so you know that, yeah. that that that's a big advantage for metro they're going to play their whole conference tournament on their home Great floor point. And we're going to play our conference tournament on a neutral floor. So we have to go through in, in, on a neutral floor to play our teams. And that's a very big advantage. They're going to sleep in their own beds. They're going to play on their home floor you know, all the way through the conference tournament. And it gives them somewhat an advantage over us. Hopefully you'll have enough Tarleton fans in Allen where it'll at least feel like a home game. Sure, sure. Let's preview Saturday night's matchup with the Greyhounds of Eastern New Mexico. That game from Port Dallas, Coach Helton's squad. They've lost three of four. But, Coach, you cannot look at that because those were losses to three very tough teams. Well, they're, they're a very good team. And they're, you know, they're very good at home. And they shoot the ball extremely well, and, and, and they beat us out there last year, Casey, in, in, in a real tough game. I think it was at the buzzer with Blackman hit one at sure the buzzer was. on us. And so, uh, I mean, I know it's going to be a tough ball game. We're both playing for a lot. We're playing for a conference championship tomorrow night. You know, if we win this game tomorrow night, I, our dreams are come through as a, as a conference champion. Uh, they're playing for a lot. They're playing to, to get themselves. Uh, I think they're like 11th or 12th in the regional, so they still have belief that they can make the regional in the next three weeks. Uh, you know, they're jockeying for position in the Lone Star Conference Tournament. And so it, I look for it's going to be a tough ball game out there. I have all the respect in the world and, and for all these teams in the Lone Star Conference because there's just no easy people. When you think there is, then call Syracuse and ask them about Boston College who went in there with six wins and beat them. Uh, you know, you cannot take anybody for granted. And those three losses, Coach, by a combined 11 points, one of them in overtime to Midwestern. Yes, and uh, it really had, my understanding is, it really, really was in position to possibly win the game. You defeated the Greyhounds 86-64 to back on January 25th in Stephenville. Somehow you found a way to hold Rodney Blackman to five points 
in 33 minutes. That's not easy to do. It's very hard to do. And, uh, I mean, I know you know he's going to be geared up to play. There's no doubt about it. He's on his home floor. Rodney Blackman's one of the top guards in this conference. And, and uh, Raphael Love is outstanding. They, you know, they, they, they're a very, very good team. You look all the way down. They've got very Kamek. good pieces. Kamek's good. And, you know, Phil Henry. They have good pieces in, in the place. they got people to come off the bench like Kyle Lance and, and uh, Romeo. You know, they can shoot the ball. Uh, Coach Helton does a great job. Uh, not too many times you call a game where the two teams in the game are in the top ten in the nation when it comes to not turning the ball over. Why is East Eastern so good at protecting the basketball? Well, I think they're fundamentally sound. I think that they, you know, probably Coach Helton works on that on a daily basis, and uh, you know that 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 is one of the big things if you're going to go on and play on tournament basketball is is how do you handle the ball and are you fundamentally sound? Are you not giving your 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 opponent? Too many opportunities, uh, you know, where you're not even getting a shot on on, on 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 that side of the ball, on the offensive side of the ball. Any conversation with Eastern starts with three-point shooting. They're second in the conference and threes made. They're first in the conference and threes attempted. What's your goal? You try to keep them around their season average? Well, you know, you always try to get people in uncomfortable positions. Hopefully that we can take some of those three threes away, some of those possessions where they, they're comfortable in shooting their three. Uh, you don't want to let them get into a rhythm, Casey, because if they do, then they can really rip the nets. And so, you know, we've got to get them in uncomfortable situations. We've got to take some of the threes away, make them put the ball on the floor some. But as they put the ball on the floor, we got to be able to contain the basketball. And if they don't contain it well, we've got to be able to stop in the gaps and rotate and, and get on shooters. So there's a lot of, you know, a lot of things to, to, to get ready for. Greyhound Arena can be a very difficult place to play, Coach. You've had some success there yes. as a head coach. How challenging is it as a player to adjust to that facility? Well, you know, I mean, it's... It's you know we've been in a lot of different arenas. You're going to have to be in a lot of different arenas, and uh, you know it's, uh, it's it's an arena that we've been you know we've been successful there. There's no doubt about that. We've won a lot of ball games out there, but they've been tough ball games that we've won. And uh, you know again we I don't really ever talk about facilities. I just talk about going out there and, and, and playing the game the way it's meant to be played, and, and and take care of the fundamentals of the game, take care of the the game plan that we've that we put in place. And uh, then you just have to let the players execute it and see where they take the game. It's the Texans and Greyhounds at 8 o'clock on Saturday night in Portales. Then Tarleton will return home on Tuesday night for the final home game of the regular season to face Lubbock Christian in a makeup game. It was originally scheduled for November 23rd. Mother Nature had different plans, so it turns out to be this Tuesday night. Is that a positive thing? Because you're playing an NCAA tournament caliber team right before March hits. Yeah, and, and Lubbock Christian, and they have a good record. I think they're like 14 and 6 right 15. now. 15. Yeah, they beat St. Mary's last night. Beat St. Mary's. That's always good to know. I got to play them next week. Then. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I mean, they've got an outstanding record now, 15 and 6, and uh, they're one of the best teams in the Heartland Conference. The reason they're not in the regional ranking is they're going through their NCAA probation time because they just turned Division Two, I think, two years ago. So they're in their third year of probation. But they, you know, they, the record, you know, when we play them, it's going to count one way or another. It's going to count on our record. And so they bring in an outstanding team, and uh, they've beaten Eastern at Eastern this year. They, of course, Eastern beat them in Lubbock. And so uh, Lubbock Christian, I, I hope we have a big crowd that night because it's not on the schedule. So I hope everybody hearing this on the radio or here, get it out there. It's our senior nights, our last game for our seniors at home. And, uh, and we're going to play an outstanding basketball team. And I wanted to talk to you about this game because – if Lubbock Christian could be in the regional rankings, they'd probably be sitting fourth or fifth right now. No doubt. They so be, this is a very five. important game between number one and what could have been number four or five. It puts you know it puts it puts a lot on us, but it, it can help us a lot because our record is good. And in the, and you know, everybody's heard of these formulas. You've heard the BCS formula, and now you hear the Division Two. I can't the, understand the, the, the Division Two formula. Everything is on formulas, and they put our put our team into a computer, and the computer spits it out and says this is where you're supposed to be. You know, Good luck figuring it out. Yeah, exactly. And so, I mean, I know there is there is a committee that looks at all that, but there's only you know OOWP and OPW, and I can't keep up with all this computer language. <laughs> Let's not use acronyms here. I'm not that smart. And, and, so. and so, I mean, you just uh, that's the way things have turned out in this world. A computer runs your life or runs your team, and so uh, right now the computer says Tarleton's number one. And so uh, whatever the computer they're using, I hope they keep using it for a while. <laughs> it's Tarleton and Lovett Christian on Tuesday night at 7 o'clock, the final home basketball game of the year at Wisdom Gym. It's senior night as Coach Reisman and his staff will honor the five Texan seniors on the roster. One of those seniors we'll talk to in our next segment, DeAndre Upchurch, when the Coach Lon Reisman Radio Show continues in one minute. Church College. This is James Childress from Brunner Motors on South 